Okay, hi guys. Uh, so uh, we're going to go further into the major minor key system and of course as I said earlier at this level the real focus is on the minor keys as they call them. Uh, and today we're going to cover a few points including chromaticism in the uh, minor keys. I think I mentioned that if you talk to any uh, jazz musician and ask them would they prefer uh, improvising in a minor or major key, most of them will say minor keys and it's for the very reason of the chromaticism that's brought forth. Secondly, I'm gonna, I don't want to go deep into harmony. In my book, I introduce the major minor key system as a general idea and go through how the scale was tweaked, the minor scales were tweaked, but I do not go into harmony and chord building and chord connection. Um, I don't want to go, that's not the step we're going to take right now. We need to discuss a little bit further. Uh, first, I want to hit um, chromaticism in the minor keys. You know, chromatic refers to color. And uh, when you use a lot of chromatic notes, you're adding a lot of color into your music. Um, that goes without saying. I think that's pretty much understood. I have plenty of students that, you know, they learn a pentatonic scale and they improvise and they, they tell me, I, I want more notes. I want, you know, something beyond just this. And, um, and so I teach them how to get there further. In any case, um, let's first look at chromaticism. And um, I want you to look at uh, these three scales, the natural minor scale, the harmonic minor scale, and finally the melodic minor scale. Now, the important place to look at is from the fifth step on up to one. Uh, and what I'm going to do is, all right, it's necessary, it's absolutely necessary that these scales blend together, all right? Um, I talked about the blues as, as uh, the concept of blending keys. Well, uh, in a sense, this is a very strange thing, you'll see it in the future, but the blues is strangely connected to the evolution of the minor scales. And, you wouldn't put the two together because they happen so many hundreds of years apart, but yet, um, because of this blending, the blues could happen. Um, all right, so we're looking at uh, the last bunch of notes from the fifth step on up to the first step of the scale. And what I'm doing is we have E there, we have F there, we have F sharp there, we have G there, we have G sharp, and finally A, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of those notes, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, and A, and put them together since we can indeed blend them, and in fact we must blend them, and I'll explain that uh, shortly. So, um, uh, all right, to demonstrate, uh, if I do the natural minor, and I'm going to stay on one string so you can see the distances, uh, from the fifth step, E, I get E, F, G, A. If I do harmonic minor, I get E, F, G sharp, A. And if I do melodic minor, I get E, F sharp, G sharp, A. So what I'm going to do is round up all those notes and changes and put them together in one bunch. And what we get is... All right, or... And not only that, but I'm, I'm going to take this as far as it can go. And what if I went down a further half step? Well, this is the blue note flatted fifth, and finally the fourth of the scale. So I can literally get a chromatic string that goes from A all the way down, down to the D note. All right, staying uh, within those three scales, okay? Uh, blending them together, I mean. So now, this is where you get, first, it, it, kind of appeared in Latin music where you got this thing. That, this is an A minor chord, right? And what I'm doing is I'm going to chromatically move those same notes I showed you on the A minor chord. So, uh, All right, so that sounds familiar, doesn't it? That's a standard Latin line. Now, I want to talk quickly about the uh, famous uh, Led Zeppelin lawsuit. Uh, what was the band? I forget their name. Uh, 
but they sued Zeppelin for stealing their progression. Now wait a second. The, uh, the Zeppelin progression is basically this. All right, except they add a diatonic line also going up, which is kind of brilliant actually, but now we get... Oh, sorry. Uh, all right, you can hear the song in there. Now, the thing about that lawsuit is that it's ridiculous. Why? Because Paul McCartney could have sued both bands because he wrote Michelle before Zeppelin wrote Stairway to Heaven, and I forget the name of that other band that uh, what their song was, but, uh, you know, uh, I will say the only words I know that you love. It's the same exact chord progression, and not only that, but then, you know, McCartney could have been sued by the guy, I forget, who wrote My Funny Valentine. My Funny Valentine. So the fact of the matter is you cannot core, uh, copyright a chord progression. It'd be ridiculous. It's like, say I copyrighted the phrase, hey, how you doing? Then nobody would want to use that phrase because they'd have to pay for it. They'd have to find numerous ways to figure out how to say, hey, how you doing, without using those exact words. Yeah, the, the whole situation is ridiculous. It's absurd. You cannot copyright a chord progression. And I'll tell you the truth, one thing I tell my students who are involved in improvising is I tell them, look, you want to steal a chord progression, go ahead and do it from any composer you'd like to steal from. Change up the rhythm, change up the melody, and you have your own piece of music. In fact, the history of music is basically based on people ripping each other off and developing those rip-offs into something new and different, you know. Uh, so that's the way it works. Now. Uh, with the advent of these scales, when we, I'm going to shortly talk about harmony, but not deeply because that, that's a whole pursuit that we'll eventually get into as we go along here. But there were new chords that were possible either by the shape of the scale itself. For example, I couldn't have an E7 flat 9 chord until the harmonic minor scale came along. By the way, if you recognize that chord, it's in I Want You by the Beatles, John Lennon song. Um, flat nine chord. Um, when, we're going to talk about triads in a minute, so I won't mention this particular chord. Uh, but also, remember, we're blending all of these together. Well, the famous what guitar players like to call the Hendrix chord, which is E7 sharp 9. All right, uh, nice and handy for our key of a, a minor. That chord has to. There is no one scale that you could pick the notes out and get this chord. That scale doesn't exist, or it's a non-lawful scale that has two half steps next to each other. Won't go into that. But um, basically, you have to blend the natural minor with the harmonic minor to get this chord. Why? Because in this chord I have a G sharp here. And remember, the E7 chord is the 5-7 chord of the key of A minor. Right? So, uh, to get the sharp 9, this part of the chord is the root 3rd and flat 7 of an E7 chord. And here's my sharp 9. That's a G note. The G note comes out of the natural minor. Right? Uh, G and the G-sharp note comes out of the harmonic minor. So I have to blend the two scales together in order to get that chord. So you see now new chords begin to emerge. Um, uh, now, if when we talk about triads, there are only four possible triads. Okay, If we go strictly with the laws of music, which say chords are built in thirds. So... Um, if we look on a C scale, we get C, E, and G. That's a major chord, and the formula for a major chord is two whole steps, one and a half steps. C to E is two whole steps. E to G is one and a half steps. This is a half step right here, E to F, right? Um, actually, let me put a hyphen between the half steps so you could really, really clearly see it. There are half steps between E and F, B and C. All right, so 
the chords are obviously built in thirds. You, you leapfrog over another one. One, two, three, one, two, three. So C, E, G, right? Now we have the minor chord as the second chord of the key, D minor. So I have D, F, A. Now that's a different formula because here I was going for C. I was going two whole plus one and a half. Here I'm going one and a half plus two whole. Now I will state that the distance between the root and the fifth of both of these chords remains. It's a perfect fifth. If you flat or raise a fifth, and we'll get there in a second, what happens is you have a destabilized chord that cannot rest, it needs to move. All right, so now we see that the formula for a major chord is uh, two whole plus one and a half. The formula for a minor chord is one and a half plus two whole. But then we have one and a half and one and a half. Where's that come from? Well, C, the C chord follows the major formula. D minor follows the minor formula. E minor fo follows the minor formula. F major follows the major formula. G major follows the major formula. A minor follows the minor formula, but then B, D, F, wait, we're getting one and a half here and one and a half here. There's a half step between E and F, and there's a half step between B and C. So from the natural scale, we get three types of chords. That last chord is called a diminished chord, and it is very unstable. You can't relax on a diminished chord. And if I did a resolution, let me compare resolutions if I do... Uh, F sharp 7 to B major, you can hear the resolution. If I do F sharp uh, 7 to B minor, you can hear the resolution. If I do F sharp 7 to B diminished, it wants to go somewhere else. It, it, that is not a relaxed chord. Okay, so what you destabilize a chord by, by moving that perfect fifth. And you'll note that six chords of the key um, have perfect fifths of them, but that little diminished at the end does not. And I also described to you how the diminished chord is actually absorbed by the G7 chord because of the strong root on the G note. So that diminished chord is, it, it doesn't really have much of an identity on its own. But there is one more type of chord. When you think about it, we have, we haven't exhausted the possibilities. We have two whole, one and a half. We have one and a half, two whole, we have one and a half, one and a half, but we don't have one that goes two whole, two whole, and that chord did not emerge until uh, the harmonic minor scale was built, and you'll see here what was no, used to be a C major chord is now two whole, and then E, not to G, but to G sharp, is also two whole. And again, that's n no longer a perfect fifth in that chord, so it's unstable, it wants to go somewhere. I can't go G7 to C augmented and feel like I've relaxed. It wants to go somewhere else, okay? Uh, so there are indeed four triads, all right? The uh, major triad, the minor triad, the diminished triad, and the augmented triad. The augmented triad was a new thing. It emerged with the harmonic minor scale. It didn't exist before then. Uh, and the uh, augmented chord is a wonderful chord for creating lines, for getting uh, passing chords. That second chord I did was a C augmented. So it's a C chord, except you raise the G to G sharp. Uh, the Beatles used this in spades back in their early days, especially the augmented chord was really big with them. Um, later on, there's another interesting chord called the diminished seventh, which we'll discuss in the future. And by the way, uh, the diminished seventh chord does emerge from the uh, A harmonic minor scale again. That chord did, could not exist before then, but now it does. And uh, it's a magical chord. Um, George Harrison discovered it and used it very often it's a great solution chord when you're trying to connect two chords together and you can't figure out what chord will do it that diminished seventh chord will always do the trick you'll find it in my sweet lord um E minor 
matter. It's a lovely chord and it's purely magical, very much related to the dominant seventh chord. Uh, I won't go into it. That deserves a, that chord deserves a lecture all on its own because it's amazing. Uh, okay, so we discussed the four triads, and uh, I think this is going to be a shorty today. That's it for me today. Um, I have some appointments I have to keep up with, but we're getting started down the path of, of a deeper and deeper understanding of the major minor key system, how it evolved, and how to use it. It's a, it's a very complex system, as I said before. When we get into harmony, harmony is really where the deep talk happens, so we'll get into that very soon. In the meantime, have a great day. Uh, glad you're watching my videos, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.